All right, engine control. Okay, engine control. So, engine controls mode. So this button is to switch between manual and automatic control. When you're in manual control, you're gonna have to take care of the prop pitch, radiator, supercharger, magneto, uh, the prop fittering, and the engine control. Wow. <laughs> so, there's a lot of stuff you have to talk about, but I put that button, engine control, on O, just beside the, the Y, uh, I, I guess not Y, for toggle engine. So it's right, it's right beside the engine ignition. So wait, what oh. button do you have? You have a uh, Y as the. Uh, y I is a uh, toggle engine. Uh huh. And O. Okay. Engine controls mode. Nice. Okay. Okay. So first thing that is on the manual uh, stuff mixture. So the mixture is uh, how much air. And fuel. To let go in the uh, yeah or fuel. Hey, it's both, in fact. So how much you you let into the engine? So Tip go. Hang on one second. So what happens with mixture is that um, the lower you are, the um, the more mixture you want, and the higher yeah, higher exactly. you are, you want to lean the mixture so your engine performs. So if you're at low altitude, I would say Kirshaw, you want a maximum amount of mixture. And then once you get up to high altitude, you want to lean it so your engine is not saturated, or um, Exactly. With fuel. And also, you're gonna you're gonna want mixture to the uh, full rich. Full rich mean uh, maximum, uh, the the most uh, fuel possible mm -hmm. in the engine. When you're taking off, you're gonna want maximum full rich, maximum mixture. Often planes go to under twenty percent. Some goes hundred percent. It really depends uh, on on the engine type, but. Um, and um, speaking of that, what if we get into a scenario where we're on a high altitude map? Would you think that War Thunder would ever do that? Really factor in the altitude pressure or the um, the starting altitude? I think altitude? they already do. Wow. They already do. With, with so maybe maybe we can just um, say that if you're on a very mountain, like you know, a very mountain, like maybe a. What what map has mountains or that that new map? What's it called? Top of the world. If you take off from there, you might want to um, have the mi the uh, mixture at a medium setting instead of fully rich, because then oh, you'll. That's a pretty damn good question. Yeah, I, I wanna. But I would put it uh, full full rich anyway. Even if you're uh, if you're uh, taking off from the top of the Himalaya, just so uh, you don't drown your engine, because when it's full rich you're sure that the engine is not going to be uh, too lean. It, it's not going to, yeah, it's not going to have problems. And also I think that they would tell us that, right? Wouldn't they, if, if they really want us, wanted us to use this to that extent, they would have, you know, different um, altitudes at certain maps. But anyways, so maximum value is. Uh, yeah, you're going to want to put that on uh, relative control. Okay. And personally, what I use is five and six. Increase value five, decrease value six. Nice. It, it's pretty much the same control as the throttle. You're gonna want relative control sensitivity 100%, and then uh, zero percent. I have the multiplier at one. I don't know why, but it, it, you mess around with it until the percentage change uh, like you want. Okay, good. There's a couple more things to talk about in the mixture is that if you want to uh, to save fuel you uh, you can lower the mixture and uh, just keep you know just keep your your plane flying slow and keeping its altitude and you can save a lot of fuel by um, not using uh, using a lot more air than uh, than fuel but it, it, it's um it's very complicated and it changes with every uh, every plane. So probably you, you're gonna want to check on the uh, on the internet uh, for details on that. You know, special guides. And now uh, propeller pitch. Next next thing. Okay. Uh, the propeller pitch. Personally, I put uh, the um, the throttle nubs. You know, on the joystick, I use that for the propeller pitch. The, it's, uh, it's really convenient. The uh, um, plus and minus thing on the 3D Pro, like the um, the uh, what's it called? The uh, throttle 
the actual thr throttle on the 3D Pro? Yeah, yeah, that I use the throttle for the prop pitch. Okay. Yeah. So maximum is also the highest point on the uh Yeah, you're probably going to want it to be uh invert axis on uh, on that. And have it uh, relative control no. Okay. I think mine's set. Okay, so uh, one thing that is uh, important to talk about with the prop pitch, um, you can also set it to automatic. If the plane can use automatic prop pitch, I really recommend to use uh, automatic prop pitch. But usually, the, um, the only times you're going to go in manual control is to uh, save fuel or lower the temperature of your engine. So... What's important to know about the propeller pitch is that if you want to lower the temperature of your plane, you're going to have to lower it to maybe 70% or 80%. And you're going to want to lower it just enough to keep the speed, but not to, to make your engine work too much. Uh, if you're diving really, uh, really steeply, you're going to want to have the propeller pitch really low because if you're diving and your propeller pitch is at 100%, hey, it's up. pushing on your engine from from the. It's a bit. You're gonna have to go in the in the in depth guides on the internet if you want uh, more information about that because I'm not really a pro about propeller pitch. But if you have the propeller pitch not set correctly, you're gonna overeat your engine in a dive. So that's something to look into. And but and also usually, and also if you don't have your propeller pitch set. You can have your throttle at 100%, but you won't be going as fast as you can because if you don't have the, the propeller set at an ideal angle for that altitude and um, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's just going to chop air uh, for no reason. It's instead just of generating thrust. It's going to butter, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do anything. All right, so... Okay, so that's prop pitch. Uh, auto prop pitch, you're going to want to set that uh, somewhere, anywhere, I guess. I'm going to set mine it's to... It's useful to have it. P. Next thing, radiator. Uh, you're going to want to set that uh, button like a throttle with relative control. Yes, relative control sensitivity 100%. Okay. And on that one, I put uh, E to decrease value and R to increase value. So it's like just under the flaps for me. Right, nice. That, that's not something you're going to use often, though. But if you go in uh, in manual engine control and open your uh, radiator 100%, you're going to see it in, in third person that your radiator is all open. And the first thing you're going to no notice is that it really opens a lot and that the manual, uh, the automatic engine control pretty much never open the radiator completely. So unless you you're on, unless you're on landing. Engine. Yep, yep. But I don't know exactly uh, all about that. But when you want to cool down your engine, you have to put it in manual and then open your radiator to the maximum. It's also, I think, if you were to be really good with manual engine control, you could be going slightly faster than someone on automatic because you'd be controlling the prop pitch perfectly the radiator would be completely closed because I think the computer keeps the radiator at like at least 20% all the time. It's always a little bit open. And if you close it manually, you gain uh, a little kilometer per hour more. So it's it changed a little. It can make a difference, but not much. It's important to set because often uh, let's say you have oil overeating. That happens all the time on, let's say, uh, Spitfires. It's really annoying too. So when you're landing, you cut your engine and open the radiator completely and just watch the uh, the cockpit. The needle is going to fall down really fast. When you're at 50, 60 degree, you just uh, put your engine automatic again and take off and, and you're not going to have... Uh, Oil problem. Can, can you future. do that in? So uh, can you do that in flight as well? 
Yep, you can do that in flight. Okay. You can switch uh, manual, automatic, anytime. So you, often uh, when I know I'm going to be in a fight for a long time, I'm going to put it manual, drop the prop pitch a bit, open the radiator completely, adjust the mixture, and just uh, cruise to destination, you know, not not forcing my engine right away so that I'm going to be able to abuse that engine when I'm going to be in a fight. So you, you take care of it so you can abuse it uh, later on. Mm -hmm. Abuse it for a longer time. Anyway, uh, next, uh, auto radiator. I don't think this even work. I, I've, I haven't seen a plane that has an uh, auto radiator that works. But uh, uh, you can set it something. I have I have it to uh, shift and R, so it's uh, it's with this all the radiator controls are together. So next supercharger. So not uh, many planes have uh, the supercharger, but um, the the P fifty one does, doesn't it? For everything. Yeah, it does. Usually the high altitude fighters uh, will have it. On a lot of planes, like the German, I think it's uh, it's automatic. You don't have to deal with it. Uh, so the supercharger, what it does, it uh, it compresses the air. Since you're at a high altitude, um, the uh, the supercharger compresses the air for the engine, so it, it makes it uh, better perform. So like basically, <laughs> you can be at twenty thousand feet with that altitude of or that density, and then the, the supercharger will. Um, compress that out, that air at 20,000 feet and make it like 8,000 feet so your your plane can perform at 20,000 feet like it would at 8,000 feet. Exactly. So usually that thing has uh, a couple stage, uh, zero, one, and two. Zero is typically for altitude 2,000 and lower, uh, one, 2,000 and higher. And if it has two, uh, I don't know, it, it's changed for every plane, but maybe 5,000 and more. You, you At that point, you have to check the uh, the plane specification and stuff, but I don't use the supercharger very for often. I'm just in automatic mode all the time, unless I want to uh, cool down the engine, then I'm going to be in manual. So supercharger doesn't really, uh, is not really useful. But I put it on, uh, on Z. Uh, I don't know if I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I got mine on control S Z. or uh, shift S. Yeah, so that's anything works because it's not used a lot. Uh, then magneto position. Um, I put mine at uh, four. Um, oh, I think I set mine wrong. But uh, you put them anything maybe on the numbers. I, I put mine shift four for the next magneto and shift five. Uh, typically, you're not going to want to mess with the magneto. Uh, if you shut it down by error, your plane is not going to restart uh, easily. Like it, it can put you in a lot of trouble, but I've heard some people uh, can do some pretty wicked stuff with that. Let's say uh, you have somebody on your six and you want to cut your speed really fast. You can macro a lot of stuff on your joystick that would cut um, all your speed, like you would macro prop pitch 0%, magneto off, all the magnetos off, mixture zero, uh, air brake on, all the flaps on, uh, on one button of the joystick, and it would, uh, it would slow you down extremely fast in just one press. But yeah. I never did that, but I heard some people use the magneto for that to help uh, lose a lot of speed and uh, cause an overshoot of someone. It's called a Cobra I never if you can that. perform it. I don't think you can do a Cobra with, uh, <laughs> with prop planes. And, and <laughs> not, not with the War Thunder physics. De definitely not. Okay, so going to the next thing, toggle prop fettering. Uh, prop fettering is when your engine uh, broke, let's say you don't have any fuel or uh, your propeller is destroyed or whatever, you're, you're, you're just gliding, right? And you want to glide as long as you can. What the prop featuring, if it's how it's called, I don't know how to pronounce uh, it. Feathering. Uh, is what, a, uh... 
like a feather, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's probably what it means. But um, what it does is uh, it removes all the resistance in the propeller. So you're going to glide longer. So uh, not many planes have it. Doesn't it turn the prop from a horizontal to a vertical position? I have no idea how it works. I, I've never used it. Uh, I know I spam it uh, out of desperation on a lot of plane, and it never works. So because the thing, I, I think I, it the uh, the prop, numbers, I, I think C one thirties have prop feathering that acts as a um, th a, a thrust reverser. Because the uh, props turn from yeah. a vertical or a horizontal to a vertical, and it and it pushes air down on the ground, which st slows the plane down. So maybe that could be used to oh, slow yeah. down even I, faster. Yep, yep, it it can do that. I remember reading that somewhere, but uh, I don't know which plane have it or how to use it. But uh, you know, you can you can bind it uh, to something, I guess. Okay. Next, uh, engine control. So that's um. That's not something you're gonna use typically, but let's say you fly the uh, what's it called? The Lightning, the uh, P something, thirty-eight. P thirty-eight. P thirty-eight. Yeah, it's got two engine and and two spinning like a counter. Uh, Clockwise. And the clock. Anyway, yeah. So. Well, one's one say, one's uh, spinning. They're 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 both spinning opposite ways. Do you know that? Yeah. So you don't uh -huh. have to deal torque. with the torque. Yeah, it's so but, nice on takeoff. Yeah, say you want to uh, to shut down one engine and uh, just uh, use one engine to turn or something. I, I I'm not really a pro of the P38. You you would have to set the engine controls. You know, set set these as button. Uh, let's say when you press uh, engine controls, I, I set it on the uh, num num lock key uh, the keypad. Mm -hmm. I set it to one two. So if you press one. Is you're gonna be able to um, deal with only the second engine, so you can let's say uh, cut the throttle completely for the uh, second engine, and then if you uh, if you press two uh, and then one again, you're gonna be able to control only the engine control. It's it's gonna tell you in a blue text on the side which engine you're controlling. Uh, I think it's a bit complicated for nothing to set engine controls, but uh, if you play bombers, maybe you you want to to use that. Maybe you can use prop fettering when you have an engine that just died. You like uh, set it so it's not it doesn't uh, emperor you. But I don't fly bomber a lot, but that's maybe something you you'd want to do. And that's it for this section, I guess. Nice. All right, view controls. The most one of the most ingenious and revolutionary aspect of this joystick setup. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, it's really the most important section because that's where all your awareness come from. And in air combat, awareness is is king. It, it's it's better to have good awareness than being a good shot. Like then be being able to to compute in your head uh, the bullet drops and everything. That's really optional. What is really important is awareness and and knowing where you are in relation to others. I so agree. this is the most important section. All right, let's start zoom camera. Um, you put that where you want. To yeah, I got mine at uh, um, um, number pad zero, the zero on the uh, num lock. Or that section of the numbers. Yeah, I have it on the, on the joystick personally because when you're uh, uh, usually when you're zooming on someone, you don't uh, you're not too much uh, under stress. So you just uh, you just press uh, a button on the joystick, and it, it, it doesn't it it won't ruin your your joystick uh, handling. But that's uh, that's a matter of personal preference. Anywhere is fine. Next thing, toggle sight. So a lot of people are gonna like mess with this button and don't understand what it does. But uh, it's really uh, it's really simple. Is when you are in cockpit mode, there's a reflector sight which has a light under it. So what this does is open or close this light. So it's gonna it's gonna remove the um, the yellow outline of the crosshair. 
on your reflector site. Really? Uh, um, I never knew that. Yeah, so you can shut it down. Let's say you're in um, in full real battle. You're going to be able to see better through your reflector site. And then you open it again um, when you're ready to shoot. So, it, But you can pretty much leave it open all the time because this is a simulator. But in, the, um, in real life, um, in the planes, there are uh, these light bulbs. I have a very... Um, short lifetime they burn really fast so the pilots um add them close most of the time and even in many planes you're gonna look um on the left uh, i mean right of the cockpit uh near the flap switches there's go you're gonna see uh like five or six light bulbs um embedded in the cockpit so the the pilots used to to switch these even in battle uh switch that light so in War Thunder, they don't burn out, but, uh, you know, it's it's a fun thing to, to open and close it. It's a very optional button. Uh, next thing, follow camera. Very enemy. important and historical. I, <laughs> I never use it, personally. Wow. I only, uh, I only control my camera uh, manually. So I, I Also, I learned that, uh, that you could do that. Um, a few weeks ago, and I, w I was completely outraged by that. I was like, so that means every time I'm training someone in HB, he just has to spam this button, and he's going to acquire me even if I'm sneaking on his six. Right. So, you yeah. don't got to worry about that in full real, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, if you don't have any honor, you might want to bind that uh, to an easily reachable key. You I know? got mine like, on... Like, uh, uh, like Flight 80 does. Button yeah. 8 on the um, left side on the base of the 3D Pro. But yeah, if you're an epic pilot, <laughs> you're not going to bind it because that's just a noob thing to do. Anyway, I'm full of prejudice <laughs> so next thing uh camera control bum torpedo very nope. optional i just i just leave it normal toggle view also very optional i never use it no me either uh f1 no, f2 no. f3 no. that that's that's convenient i use f2 f3 f4 uh typically you want to uh press f2 to look at your cockpit that's useful um when you want to check your oil gauge you know for the temperature uh that's pretty much the only place you can see your temperature uh usually if you're in the cockpit it's gonna be on the lower right uh the fuel and everything gauge is gonna be there so let's say you're on the runway looking at your plane cooling down you're gonna be uh eyeing that uh, that co gauge until it's at uh, 50 degrees and such so you want you want to have a button bound for for cockpit view even if you always use uh, virtual cockpit so virtual cockpit i have it on f4 and uh, i use external view sometime too on f3 but it's mainly to uh to check for damage let's say you just got shot you you're gonna want to check uh what what is uh what has been it like how, how many holes you got in a wing so it helps uh, to to um to to gauge uh, how much a lift how much lift you're gonna lose on on a wing because let's say you're gonna uh, be landing uh, you're gonna lose speed eventually and if you have damage to a wing you're gonna stall earlier so it's good to appraise your damage before landing and also if you got damage just before landing check in uh, third person if both of your gear are out. Because sometimes you're gonna have one of your gear that gets crits, and if you fly only virtual cockpit or cockpit, you're not gonna know that one of your gear is uh, is not out. So you're gonna land on just one gear and and kill yourself. So it's good to check in third person, even if you're uh, always virtual cockpit and, and stuff. All right, next thing: gunner view, bomber view, default view, uh, all optional, because. I don't fly bombers. Uh, mouse look activation optional too. And next is the most important of all: the uh, view x-axis. Oh yeah. You're gonna want that in relative control too. 
And this is this is what sets up your whole entire awareness, basically. Yeah, this this is the most important. If you don't set it correctly, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be snappy. It's gonna be you're gonna press, let's say, A to look to the left, and it's gonna instantly look to the left uh, at the maximum right. if you don't then, set it. And with uh, that way, you, you can get really um, confused of you know, and the target might not be at that certain angle of where it snaps to. Yeah, so what, what I'm, uh, I'm making you set up is more of a pan camera. So it's going to pan, uh, you're going to press as much as you want it to turn. Uh, also, that there's a lot of personal preference at this point. So you're going to want to set it at the speed that you want. Uh, if you have uh, uh, very you know, sharp eyes and you can take care of the detail, details really fast, you're going to want it to pan... Uh, quickly so you just um, take a, a really uh, really fast look uh, in one direction and be able to uh, to look somewhere else right away if you set it too slow uh, it's gonna take a while to turn your head behind and then so, so for the increase it's a trade-off for the increase and decrease what do we put you're gonna put increase D and decrease a so basically, decrease look uh, to the left and uh, increase to the D. So I guess it's like a, a Cartesian map where the the left part is uh, the negative, which is left, okay. and uh, right is an positive. A uh, reset value that is what is gonna snap your view uh, back in the middle instantly. So you're gonna want that to an easily accessible key. Personally, I have mine. I put it on the on the tiled. Yep. The yep. Mm -hmm. The tilde. It's the button on the left of the one. Yep. So uh, it's a little squiggly thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's really convenient. It's it's a button that uh, usually pops up the console in other game, but uh, I really like that button. I bind everything to it in if I can usually in a game, because it it's right there on the WASD setup, and I mean don't let it go to waste. Um, next thing. Uh, dead zone. I don't know if there's uh, something there. Zero point twenty-five. Is it by default uh, zero point twenty-five? Mine's uh, zero point zero two. So set that to zero point twenty-five. Oh, that's that's all right, I guess. Um, Non-linearity. It's one. Um, invert axis. No. Relative control sensitivity. Eighty percent. Uh, and that's the part where it's personal. You're gonna want to adjust that percentage uh, until you're comfortable. Personally, I'm comfortable with 80%. It's just uh, it's just the right speed, and that percentage works in combination with multiplier. The multiplier for me it's at 0 0.5. Okay. And uh, the control step 0 0.0, correction 0% too. Alrighty, yeah. So you, you you mess around until you have uh, everything correct at that point. And then for the Y axis. Right, next one. Uh, it's gonna be very similar, all the same numbers. Um, relative control, yes. Relative control sensitivity, eighty percent. And it's gonna be increased value W, and decreased value S. Again, that's like a, a Cartesian map. You you go up, it's positive. You go down, it's negative. And then reset value is the same thing, right? It, it's the same button. Okay. Yeah. It's nice. going to say uh, same button. You say add so that it, it okay. is the same. And, and the, the snap back, the, the center snap button is really convenient. It really puts you exactly in the middle. So often when you're looking around, you're going to spam it often. Even when you, when you watch my video, you see me. Uh, spamming the recenter button like a madman all the time. I'm just looking for a few seconds on the side and just spamming. I mean, half a second even that I'm just looking at a side and then spamming the uh, that button. It's it's really useful. You have to use it a lot when when using this uh, control scheme. All right, next camera smoothness. I don't think this affect the WASD setup. But uh, just for the record, I have it at uh, five bars. I think it only works for the mouse for that. 
It's like camera look speed, camera smoothness, camera mouse look speed. Right. They're all only for the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> zoom axis, not a sign for me. Sensitivity in zoom, sensitivity gunner, view. That's all personal stuff. Relative camera con movement on ad view, no. No. You zoom with ad tracking, no. For me, look yes. Look down. <laughs> look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look down, look back. Nope. Um, you're. I get. I guess uh, if uh, you want to set a button that looks instantly uh, behind you, because it takes uh, maybe half a second to look behind you when you're using uh, WASD. So if you set a button that instantly look back, maybe it helps you. But I don't have it uh, bound. You you don't really need it. Next, uh, these are new settings, like uh, they weren't there when I started playing. It's head movement forward and back. Uh, this one is not assigned for me. It's not really necessary because, uh, you know, it's the same as zoom. You're just moving your head forward or back. I mean, it's just, it's superfluous. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And then um, head movement upward, downward. Uh, that's that's something that's more convenient when you're playing um, FRB or let's say you want to look at your plane from uh, inside the cockpit. So what this does, it makes your uh, your pilot stand up or or stand down and uh, so they can have d different angles. So maybe if you're a P forty seven pilot, you got a big nose for takeoff. You can. Uh... Um, head moving upward, so you can maybe see a little bit more over your nose. Yeah, okay. you you can see how much your radiator is open. Um, the one thing I know it's very useful is on the Focke Wolf 190A5. Um, the oil temperature gauge is like under the dashboard. There's mm. like a, a little recess in the in the uh, in the dashboard. You you. You should put that like a screenshot in in the video of that, <laughs> um, and you you can't see it if you're just um, looking at it. You you just see uh, partially the counters, but you don't see exactly what it is. But if you tilt your head uh, downward, you can see uh, at what temperature it is. So it's one it's one thing that says. Uh, it's the only reason I bound some keys for that, just to be able to. What did you? Uh, uh, what did you bind? Oh, meter. So I put on that. Um, uh, you you double click on, on that one. Which one? Um, to, upward, to send downward. The stuff. Uh, yeah, upward, downward. Relative control. You you can put it relative if you want, but uh, I I prefer it snappy because you're if you want to stand up in a plane, you're either gonna want to stand. Uh, all the way up or all the way down. So you don't need relative control for that. So it's at no. And uh, so if you look at the top, it's going to be maximum value. I put it at shift and W. Shift and, and W? At, yep. And then the other one, shift and S. So if you want to, mo it's really intuitive because you get used to the camera moving with the WASD, and if you want to move the pilot, you're just gonna be pressing with uh, on the shift with your little finger, just to move your pilot around. So it's it's um it's really convenient, and you're gonna want to set the reset value uh, with the tiled. The the same as the uh, the other view settings. Done. Yes, that should be it. And then uh, you, there's a uh, last one, movement left, right. It's the same setting as the one uh, before, except you're gonna put uh, maximum value shift D and minimum value shift A. So that's just to to move to each sides. All right. But once you said that. You, I recommend just go in a, a test flight and uh, and try it out. I think I think we went through uh, all the controls. So you're gonna want to do the test flights and um, and see if you're comfortable with everything. If the speed of your yaw, your pitch, your uh, 
roll, if everything is fine, if, if your camera move uh, fast enough, if the throttle, um, it goes up and down fast enough. Personally, I like the throttle. Uh, if it's full, I want it to be able to shut down uh, under a second. So the percentage goes really fast. So you, you, but uh, that, that's the way it's set. Uh, uh, like I told in the, the previous uh, section, if you set it like I said, the percentage is going to move very fast. If you want to set the throttle more sensitivity, you're going to have to do that uh, manually until you're, you're comfortable with it. So yeah, that, that's about it. You're, everything should be on the, uh, on the left end and your plane control is going to be on the right end. So it's not, you're not going to strain moving the at switch uh, at the same time you're going to move the joystick. So it's going to be view on the left end and control on the right end. So it's, it's a, uh, it takes a lot of time to get used to. I mean, even you had uh, a bit of trouble at the, at yeah. the beginning. You know, it took me was, about two it, weeks. It, but it gets intuitive really fast, especially if you play games like uh, World of Warcraft and stuff like that, that use a lot of mouse on the right end and uh, WSD movement on the left end. It's going to come very naturally to you. It's a very good way to, to control the plane, I think. And uh, uh, that's uh, about it. All right. Thanks, Kirsoff, for all the information. Yeah, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs>